this is Kat with the Community Engagement Team at Keep Tahoe Blue. Today, we will be doing an activity to learn more about one way climate change impacts the clarity of Lake Tahoe. As temperatures warm, we are seeing more extreme precipitation events occurring as rain instead of snow. When it snows, cold water from the snowmelt sinks to the bottom of the lake because cold water is more dense than warm water. When it rains, warmer, less dense water stays on the surface along with pollutants found in storm water. This poses multiple threats to the clarity of Lake Tahoe. After a large rainstorm, runoff into Lake Tahoe speeds up as water rushes downhill and picks up pollutants from trails, roads, and land. We will talk more about this during our activity. As we see larger precipitation events that go from urban areas into Lake Tahoe, wetlands are unable to filter out pollutants from the stormwater. Before we begin our lesson, take a moment to think about what pollutants might be affecting the clarity of Lake Tahoe. Some examples might include eroded soil, litter, and dog waste. What other pollutants can you come up with? We will be creating our own model of the Tahoe Basin to see how pollution is affected by different forms of precipitation. To do so, you will need a bowl or a baking pan, water, ice cubes, mine have been blended up to emulate snow better, a timer, something to represent pollutants. I've used different powders I had throughout my house, but food dye or simply dirt from outside would work as well. We also need something to emulate the mountains around Lake Tahoe. I'm using a combination of foil and Play-Doh, but you could use something as simple as duct tape. First, create your mountains. I used aluminum foil as a base and covered them with Play-Doh. Next, we will put pollutants around our mountains. Now, put some ice around the mountains of your model. This will represent snowfall. Next, we will have to wait for our snow to melt, so you can put your model in the sun or use a hair dryer to speed up the process. Be sure to turn on your timer so that you can tell how long this process takes. This is what our snow simulation looks like after all the ice has melted. Take note to what this model looks like. Is the lake water clean or dirty? Is the lake water warm or cold? Are pollutants left on the mountains? Now we will do the simulation once again with rain instead of snow. Now that we've cleaned our model, we will put more pollutants along the mountains. Now, pour some water over your model. This will represent rainfall. Notice the amount of time it took the rainfall to reach your model lake. Do the pollutants act differently than they did with snow? Compared to the snow, is the lake water cleaner or dirtier? Is the water warmer or colder than it was with the snow? In my snow simulation, I noticed that the water took much longer to reach the lake and many of the pollutants were left on the mountains. In my rain simulation, the water reached the lake very quickly, the water was much dirtier and warmer, and less pollutants were left on the mountains. From this activity, we've learned that rain events push pollutants into Lake Tahoe faster and more concentrated than snow events do. As climate change becomes a more pressing issue, it is more and more important that we do what we can to reduce pollution before it has a chance to threaten the clarity of our lake. We can do this by choosing to walk, ride our bikes, or carpool, wash our cars only in designated areas, participate in litter cleanups and restoration events, such as Tahoe Forest Stewardship Day, making sure we always pick up after our pet, and avoiding phosphorus-based fertilizers. Thank you for watching and learning. Stay safe and healthy, everyone.